Yo, this is your boy G Money from Rug Pull Radio, and you're watching the Crash Course Metal Show. Shade of Lay. If you're distracted by fear of those around you, it keeps you from seeing the actions of those above. I don't have to tell you things are bad. Everybody knows things are bad. It's a depression. Everybody's out of work or scared of losing their job. The dollar buys a nickel's worth. Banks are going bust. Shopkeepers keep a gun under the counter. Punks are running wild in the street, and there's nobody anywhere who seems to know what to do, and there's no end to it. We know the air is unfit to breathe, and our food is unfit to eat. We sit watching our TVs while some local newscaster tells us that today we had 15 homicides and 63 violent crimes, as if that's the way it's supposed to be. We know things are bad, worse than bad. They're crazy. It's like everything everywhere is going crazy, so we don't go out anymore. We sit in the house and slowly the world we're living in is getting smaller and all we say is please at least leave us alone in our living rooms. Let me have my toaster and my TV and my steel belted radios and I won't say anything. Just leave us alone. Well, I'm not going to leave you alone. I want you to get mad. I don't want you to protest. I don't want you to ride. I don't want you to write to your congressman because I wouldn't know what to tell you to write. I don't know what to do about the depression and the inflation and the Russians and the crime in the street. All I know is that first you've got to get mad. You've got to say, I'm a human being. God damn it. My life has value. I want to take control and get in the zone and leave the believers behind. I want to be. As inflation increases, the only thing that's changing is the timeline, right? There is no technical difference between hyperinflation and regular inflation. The only difference is time, right? It, the only difference is that the time that the unit bias is shifting fast enough that you realize it's happening, right? So as an example, to, to finish out this point, is that in 1932, you know, the average household income was 17 bucks a week, okay? But my grandmother was born in 1932, okay? Like she's alive. She, she's, you know, like across the street from me right now. It's like, that's her lifetime, $17 a week, okay? Now an average American family probably, you know, I don't know, like 1700 bucks a week is good, right? I mean, that's 84 grand a year, right? I mean, after taxes, it's like 50 grand. I yeah. mean, you know, probably a that lot of That puts in a very could... high percentile in America. Yeah, for the whole family, you know, yeah. husband and yeah. wife, right? Yep. Yeah. And so it's like, okay. But, but the purchasing X. power of that 84,000 or whatever that comes out to is right. way it's, less. It's... Yeah. Right. And people that... in dollar value, I mean, there kind of is, but inflation is really hard to measure, which is exactly the problem and why Bitcoin is interesting. But because Bitcoin is there's a finite amount, there's a fixed supply, inflation and deflation works way different in Bitcoin because there's a fixed supply. Fiat currencies, because there's an infinite supply and because the supply of them and the lending rates of them are just, are decided by small groups of people, that is why the economy is the way it is. Bitcoin is fully different because there's a finite supply. You are able to look at your supply that you own differently than when you look at dollars. Uh, there's a market term that's used here in Chicago a lot is demand finds supply. What do I mean by that? If Ken Griffin is going to want to buy the most expensive condo in America, someone will build it for him. Someone will put a 201st floor in Miami's tallest building. If silver is going to 1,000x, I will walk into my kitchen right now. I will melt all my silverware and I will sell it at market. If gold is going to rally, Elon Musk will find more on Mars. Bitcoin is, this is a super important point. Bitcoin is the only monetary instrument in the history of our species that is fixed it does not matter how much more demand comes into the asset class kelly no one will ever be able to make more of it there are two things i can guarantee you in my life one that i'll die and the other that there will only ever be 21 million bitcoin and those are what's the two things that i can only value as my life and my bitcoin so it is the only fixed supply asset kelly it's not that complicated it's going to go up because everything else can be issued more does that why make is sense it, why you've got to explain to me one thing why is the supply fixed and and is that because someone says it's fixed who could change their mind? No, it's a great point and question, Tyler. Uh, it's because it's written in the software and the software is distributed. There is no one person to ask. There is no one person to trust. The whole decentralization, is it decentralized so that you could put 
pictures and NFTs on the blockchain? Is it decentralized so that you could fix gaming? No, it's decentralized so that the defendants of the monetary policy are distributed, is so that it's a network of computers that actually defend the policy and the instrumentation of the monetary asset. That is not the case for Ethereum. That is not the case for any other altcoin. That is not the case for the US dollar. That is not but the case for Miami real estate. That is not the case for precious metals. It is the, o it is the only monetary instrument that has its monetary policy distributed and defended Forgive in a sound way. Forgive me for being way. dense, so but, you but if you, you say that, mm -hmm. that it's, it's because this is the way the software is written and it is immutable, it is unchanged, why couldn't the software be rewritten or why couldn't the authors uh, of the software or the guardians of the software write a new software that creates Bitcoin 2.0 uh, with a with a with another supply of fixed supply of Bitcoin. Yeah. So Tyler, I run Bitcoin software, uh, and someone tried to do this. I want you to Google Bitcoin Cash after this interview is over. Someone said, I want to change the rules of Bitcoin. I may want to create more of a supply. I may want to make it faster. I may want to make it do a backflip. I may make it want to store pictures of monkeys drooling on themselves on the blockchain. And they created it and they created new rules and they called it Bitcoin Cash. It's a different asset. It's a different instrument. And when someone tries to pay me in it, my software rules that I run in my home in a room over there says, nope, that's invalid. That thing is a piece of poop and I don't accept it because it is invalidating the rules of the system that were set out by Satoshi Nakamoto over a decade ago. So you can create whatever you want. You want to create FedNow coin, flip a Dookie coin. I don't care. There's 21 million of the things that mm -hmm. I run mm -hmm. and that I protect mm -hmm. and that I save in. And those rules were started a long time ago. And that's what the network runs. So if you change mm -hmm. the rules, you're creating a different monetary asset and a different instrument. It doesn't matter. Jack, did you guys have any effect from SVB's collapse? I know, like you said, you're in Chicago. I don't know if you had any exposure there as sort of a startup or obviously I would imagine uh, maybe some other, you know, colleagues, clients, you name it. Uh, what do you make of all this? Um, well, it doesn't matter, right, Kelly? Because the U.S. government, you either got to default on it or deflate it. And so they're backstopping everything. The spigots are wide open. Uh, money printer is going burr. So it doesn't matter where your monies are held is that uh, the government's going to make you hold on it no matter what. So who cares? Uh, the only thing that's clear to us and clear to our customers is you cannot hold and save in dollars anymore. I think that there's going to be a new era of the U.S. dollar where inflation will enter a normalized 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 percent. The days of 2 percent inflation are over. What the if Fled, you're wrong, the Dad? Because really the, the market, up. as you you know, the market is telling us we've gone from having, you know, expected three and a half percent inflation last year to just over two percent now for the next five years. Again, it's the it doesn't see inflation accelerating and picking up from here. Look at the swap lines we just instituted over the weekend. The, it reiterates the dollar's dominance in the global financial system. And if anything, we're going to be averaging inflation for the next decade. That probably looks a lot more like the 2010s we just came from. It was not inflation. And Bitcoin still did very well, by the way. It was not an inflationary period. Yeah, but Kelly, the, the swap lines and treating these assets at par that these banks are holding is a load of crap. It's a politically correct way. The swap lines over the weekend were a politically politically correct way going into an election year for the Federal Reserve to bail out foreign big institutions and not take care of the little guy in the United States of America. Those things aren't trading at par. If they were trading at par, when I walked down to my bank on the corner and I said, I want my money, they'd be able to hand it to me. They can't, Kelly. So this is just a masquerade load of nonsense. If you, they, they have to backstop these things with new money and you're seeing risk on assets, you're seeing scarce assets actually be big winners here. So you could call it inflation because the CPI is a load of nonsense, right? Like the government's going to tell me how the dollar is inflating based on a basket of instruments. Like my Netflix subscription or my Caesar salad doesn't actually tell me how well the dollar is doing or how much it's being devalued. Miami real estate does. Bitcoin does. Bitcoin's up over 50% this year. Yeah. You're telling me that the dollar's not inflating? You're out of your mind. I'm not listening to that.
you save $100,000 for 100 years and give it to your great grandkids? You put it in the US dollar, you lose 99% of your economic energy. If you're maybe 99.5%. You put it in gold, gold supply doubles every 30 years. The gold bankers keep inflating the gold. Maybe you lose 90% of your economic energy. But that would be a lucky happenstance because just about every country on earth seized the gold from their citizens in the last 100 years. Everybody, even the U.S., they take your gold. Yeah. So you want to save money for 100 years. You can't do it with the currency. You can't do it with gold. Which company is going to be around in 100 years? You want to, uh, you want to put $100,000 into real estate in Florida? Can you buy $100,000? Let's say you could. 2% tax, 2% maintenance, 4% maintenance fee, 4% of $100,000, $4,000 a year. Half-life, like, your money's not going to last 100 years. How do I preserve my property, which is economic energy, which is capital, which is money? How do I preserve that? I need something harder, harder, right? More durable. I need a steel. I need an economic steel. Steel is concentrated metallic energy. Bitcoin is concentrated digital energy. Once you convert, this conversion you're talking about, taking the, going from the analog wealth, converting it into a digital wealth, how much more it could be a positive for humanity overall? You know, civilizations, they rise or fall based upon the creation and channeling of energy. And, and we think of power as energy delivered in a certain period of time with a focus. So it's all about firepower, naval power, air power, nuclear power. Rockefeller gave us liquid energy in the form of oil. Uh, Bitcoin is digital property. It's conveyed by digital power. Those Bitcoin miners are digital power providers, and it's the most powerful computer network in the world. So we see this as profound because there's hundreds of trillions of dollars of wealth in the analog world, and there's no doubt it's decaying. Uh, bonds are losing value because of inflation. Real estate's losing value due to just physical decay. Stocks lose value because of competition and, and product cycles and acts of God. and how that might play in with things like the law of war manual and the allowance to create Bitcoin. So a lot of people are always hitting us like, what about the constitutional definition of money and blah, 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 my silver, my silver, you know? And it's like, look, think outside of the box. If we're in war, the military has allowance to issue their own fucking currency. It says it in the war manual. Go read it. <laughs> Well, Russian President Vladimir Putin said that we're killing the dollar with our own hands in the interview that he did with Tucker Carlson. I really wanted to get your reaction to that interview. I, it was not what I was expecting, especially the beginning part where he launched into ninth, ninth century Russian history. Um, what did you think about what he said, maybe specifically about some of the economic issues we're facing? I'm waiting for him to announce that he's he's going to start using Bitcoin as currency. Oh well, I, you know, I'm one of these people that thinks if you look at Bitcoin right now, everybody's excited. It's up to, what, over 50,000? Uh, I'm one of these people that thinks if you invest 100,000 in it, eventually it's going to be worth a million dollars because the fiat currency is not going to work. And no one is, is really enthused about the, the bank issuing digital currency. I mean, you might as well stick with fiat currency. You still have no control over your own destiny. So the only way to get control of your own destiny right now in the West is Bitcoin, unless you want to go to gold-backed currency. But then the question is, how much gold have we really got? You know, I loved it when Ron Paul years ago said, please, I, I want to go into Fort Knox. I want to inventory, find out what's there. Well, it's not just Fort Knox. It's what's under the streets of New York City. You said you know, the word, you said Larry Fink. People go, they would say, oh, Larry Fink doesn't like us. And uh, in the year 2024, 
Larry Fink goes on television and speaks to leaders in the world and says Bitcoin is a store of value. It, it protects the sovereignty of the individual. It allows, it allows you to achieve your hopes. It is hope. Larry Fink has said Bitcoin is hope. What Bitcoin does, and so, um, you know, it, it flips the script on an entire, on an entire control system. Okay, because right now they take our tax money. We have no way to really kind of fight that back. They can freeze our bank accounts. They can take our houses. They can, you know, there's uh -huh. this thing called, um, you know, civil asset forfeiture where they just come in and take everything. And you really have nothing to fight back with until you, you know, you have to prove your, your innocence at, at, at this point. And so um, with <clears> Bitcoin, it flips that script to where you have complete control of your monetary wealth that they cannot shut down. So if you hold your own keys, which we recommend you do, like don't hold them on an exchange, right? Take right. full sense, take full, exactly. Take, take, take the, take the power into your own hands. Now, we all know Bitcoin is the best asset. You agree? And there, there is no second best asset. There's no hope for the shitcoiner. There's, there's no way to bring them back now from the abyss. We can, we've tried. We've built the ark, but they insist on drowning. We've built perfect money, but they insist on losing. And there's nothing we can do, Tatum, at this point. We should not feel bad for them. We should not feel bad for ourselves because we have to leave them behind. Leave them behind to rot in their own stinking shitcoinery to death. And let's not be cruel about it. Let them top themselves right away now. Tatum, back to you. Ah!